All right. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everyone? My name's Wes. This is Interactive English, which is the place that you want to be to practice and improve your English skills, of course. So welcome to today's lesson. It's going to be, it's going to be something new, something a little different. But in general, we are talking about grammar. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you, like, you like my picture there? So I want to give a quick shout out and hello to the people who are here joining me live. Lolly, Steven, Franco, Thon, Wendy, Jella, Gertrudis. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce names or miss people. Kareem, Veronica, Sabrina. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Diva, Lenish. Uh, Lenisha, Freddy, Prajim, welcome. Thank you guys for joining me today. And even if you're watching this later, thank you for being here. Please write to me in the comments. Tell me your name. Tell me where you're from. I just want to hear from you guys. We love hearing from you and reading all of your comments. So what we're going to do, let me kind of explain what this lesson is all about. It's a little different, but it's something that I really want to do in the future. And I want to do it more often because these are grammar questions that I've gotten directly from you. So a few days ago, I made a post on our Patreon page, as well as our YouTube community page asking you, well, what are some grammar questions that you guys have? And I've taken some of those questions, I've created some slides, gave some examples, and, and that's what this lesson is all about. So I've taken some of your questions that you guys have asked, and we're gonna go through those today. And I'm gonna give you some brief explanations because when it comes to grammar, there, there is a lot that you can talk about. So this is kind of just a quick overview. But again, this is something I want to do in the future and, and ask you guys questions and see what questions you have when it comes to pronunciation, vocabulary. And then we can go through and, and do these live lessons and answer those questions. So this is kind of a test run, a trial run. So... Let's just jump into it. If you have some other questions in the chat, write them down as long as they're very specific and I'll see if I can get to them. But today I want to focus on some of these questions. So our first question comes from a patron and that is from Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Um, she said she, unfortunately, she won't be able to attend today's live lesson. That is okay because it's going to be posted on our channel, but interesting. It, she's interested in getting some clarifications regarding time concordance, especially for the future. Um, so I, I followed up with her to see a little more specifics and she, she's mostly interested in about future time clauses. Now, we do have another lesson on future time clauses, which I will link up above if you guys want to check that out. But I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about just the general rules um, when we use future time clauses and how we use them. So, of course, when, when we're talking about future time clauses, it's, we're, we're referring to, it's a statement referring to an event, something that's happening in the future. And the statement is going to be made up of an independent clause and a dependent clause. Now, that dependent clause, that's, that's the future time clause um, right there, and it's introduced by a conjunction. So the one thing I want you to know, the one important thing is that sentences, you know, it can be an independent clause. An independent clause is going to have a subject and a verb. That verb, the verb in the independent clause, that is your main verb. That is going to determine when the action is taking place. If it's the past, the present, the future, that main verb in the independent clause, that is you know, what's going to determine the time. So in that independent clause, that is when you use the future tense. In the dependent clause that's introduced by the conjunction, after, before, when, while, um, uh, <laughs> what other ones? There's, there's quite a few of them. We're going to use the present simple, okay? So look at those example sentences. Boom, right there. After we eat dinner, dependent clause, present simple. The show is going to begin. That is our main independent clause. So 
going to, again, that is my main verb. And again, it's, it's telling us the future is going to begin be going to. We use be going to or will when we're referring to the future. So the show is going to begin. That is our independent clause. That is, you know, that's what's really showing the time. What's get confusing, and we've had so many students ask us before, they want to say, they want to use the future tense in the dependent, in the dependent clause and say, after we will eat dinner. And when we're doing this, the rule is, again, dependent clause, present simple, independent clause, that's your future, all right? So for example, here's another one, giving you guys some hints here. These, these lessons are very suggestive, all right? When the lesson ends, I'll hit the like button, all right? When the lesson ends, again, present simple, I will hit the like button, that, it, that shows the future. So right now, I want you guys practice, write a sentence using a future time clause, all right? Remember, have a dependent clause, use the present simple, and the independent clause, you will use the future. You can use will, you can use be going to, but let's get some sentences up here. This is what we want you guys to do. We want you to interact with us. This is interactive English. And, and even if you're watching this later, you probably, you see the chat on the side. It's great to see sentences that, that people have to say. And you can see, you know, it's a lot of different examples. So again, in the chat, write us a sentence using a future time clause, all right? You can use after, before, while, and then use that future tense, all right? So, Again, this is from Catherine. She is a patron. Uh, again, we, we try to give priority to our, our patrons, our super students. And if you guys are interested, all right, in becoming a patron, you can check us out on Patreon. Links are in the description. It's just another good way to, to connect with us, to interact with us. And, and this is what we'll end up doing when we do lessons like this and ask questions. We, we will give them priority. Um, so yes, when the lesson ends, I will have hit the, <laughs> all right. Yes, you can use it uh, with that as well, with the future perfect, excellent example. So again, if you're just joining us, we're talking about, the, we're just answering dif difficult grammar questions, questions that you guys had. We asked those questions, I've taken them and I've put them together in this lesson, which we're going through right now. Um, after watching your video, I will summarize the key points. Excellent, great, um, great future time clause, and that is just good practice, all right? Good practice, summarizing lessons, uh, reviewing content is a great way to learn. So another question that we had is this, and this, was, this is a common one, it's one that we get quite often, all right? And that is, so Manya asks, like, I find prepositions extremely confusing. Hope you'll explain it. Um, Raki also said, prepositions, all right? We need help with prepositions. And you are not alone. This is one of the most difficult things um, when it comes to, I'd say, really perfecting your English. Because there are rules and you can learn prepositions. It's easy to follow those rules. But oftentimes people make little simple mistakes because these are those tiny little function words that are easy to forget. Now, when you make these mistakes, most people, you know, even if they notice them, they will still understand what you're saying, okay? Sometimes it can cause confusion, but again, don't, don't stress out about it, don't worry about it. This is really a, a definitely a more advanced form of really perfecting your English. But I want, I'm, I'm not gonna go through every single rule when it comes to preposition. I just wanna show you some, some highlights here and let you know. So these are the top five these are the most common prepositions in the English language. So when you're listening to a TV show or movie, when you are reading a book, these five prepositions are the ones that you will come across the most. Of, in, to, for, with. Those are the top five. Most of you are familiar with prepositions because again, we learn them. And the types of prepositions, that is how, that's often how we learn them when we are starting to learn English. When you are a beginner, you might learn prepositions of time. For example, and, and people learn to say in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, preposition of time, or a preposition of place. We can learn those or prepositions when it comes to direction. So when you're learning English and studying, often they might prepositions might be grouped into those categories of time, place, direction. 
But again, prepositions, we find them after verbs, we find them after adjectives, and that's when people are like, oh, I, I really, you know, I'm confused. When do we use this preposition? And the best way, again, I say this all the time, I think one of the best ways to really learn prepositions and internalize that information is to read because then you are reading, you're reading the sentences, you, you see how it's used correctly, you're seeing how the grammar is used correctly, and you're seeing the prepositions used correctly. Now, that does not mean that you are going to memorize every single thing that you read, but you want, as you see it enough, as you see these prepositions enough, you're gonna see of used in, in certain sentences with certain words, and then it's just going to start to seep in so that the next time you are using the language, when you're using it speaking or writing, you'll start to use it correctly. So when it comes to studying prepositions, I think especially as a beginner or intermediate, um, even as an advanced, it's good to review the different types and learn prepositions when it comes to time or place or direction. But overall, I think one of the best ways to improve your, your grammar when it comes to prepositions is just to read. Read books, read newspaper articles, read these sentences that people are writing, read our sentences in the examples. It's just a great way to internalize it. So um, again, thank you guys for all these comments. Excellent, you guys are writing some great sentences with those future time clauses, perfect. When the lesson ends, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> all right, great sentence, Andy. Thanks for sharing with us. So uh, again, prepositions, they're always going to be tricky. They, they will always be challenging. In the future, we are going to do some lessons specifically about certain prepositions. And what we'll do is probably put them in those categories and talk about prepositions of time and go over all the different ones from the easy ones to the more advanced ones, the prepositions of place. There is just so much that we can talk about when it comes to prepositions. But I just wanted to show you those top five and again, suggest that reading, read, 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 read. That is a great place um, to start when you want to improve your skills and improve your knowledge of prepositions. So the next question, let's go ahead. Let's keep moving along. One of the next questions we have is uh, from Shanda. Um, Shanda, sorry if I mispronounced that. Transformation. Please make a video about transformation, affirmative uh, to negative. So there's a few things that I want to say about this. This, this is great idea. Uh, this is great information, great feedback that we're getting because again, this topic can be very in depth because a lot of times I think this is probably being asked because it's something that might happen on the IELTS. Uh, you might get a complex advanced sentence and what they want you to do is transform it into like say the same meaning, but say it a different way and you're transforming the sentence. So there's a lot that we can go into when it comes to transformation. Again, I'm just gonna give you this a little quick brief overview, um, but this gives us uh, ideas for lessons in the future to really do another live lesson and to do a deep dive into showing you more examples. Because again, when it comes to transformation, especially on an IELTS, like you think you have like these affirmative sentences, you can have declarative sentences, negative sentences, exclamatory sentences. And you, you they just want you to change it and see if you can say the, the same meaning, but say it in a different way. And again, it's a way to really test your advanced uh, level of English. So let's look at, again, basically, basically when you're talking about transformation, you're just transforming sentences and it comes down to sentence structure at the most basic form. So at the most basic form, like when we talk, when we're teaching students, especially beginner and intermediate students, you kind of have these, these sentence structures right here. You'd have a simple sentence with a subject and a verb. You'd have a compound sentence, which are two independent clauses. You're gonna have two subjects, two verbs, connected by a conjunction. And then you're gonna have a complex sentence down there at the end, which like a future time clause, you'll have a dependent clause and an independent clause. And when you were, we're talking about writing, 
or English fluency, it's good to use all of these. You want to use simple sentences, you want to use compound sentences, you want to use complex sentences. It's great to use a variety because again, that's the best way to keep people engaged in, in what you're writing or what you're saying. So simply like, again, you can transform a sentence from a simple to a complex. And I said, I study English on Sundays. And then you could make it a compound sentence and say, I work on Saturday and I study English on Sundays, okay? We've just made it a longer sentence, giving you more information. And if we wanna make a complex sentence, again, we have that dependent clause. I could say, after I work out, I study English. Or I could say, after I work out on Sundays, I study English. And you can say things in a different way and often give more information. I always tell students, give, especially when it comes to writing, details, details, details. Speak using details, write using details, provide as much information as you can. Now, again, this is a great way to look at it. Again, if you're a beginner, English learner, you, pr you just start out with simple sentences. You don't, and, and just speak using simple sentences. And then as you get more comfortable, learn how to use compound sentences, start using those, and then complex sentences as you become more of an advanced learner. So this is a good topic. I appreciate the question because again, that's something I think would be a good topic to go into and do a deeper dive and really go over some of those IELTS examples, which I think is what um, you, you know probably brought about this question. Another one, a uh, question from Rosalinda. All right, she has a lot of questions, but the most important have problems with the perfect tenses. I'm guessing the present perfect and the past perfect. Um, also, uh, Yulia has a similar question. That's why I put it up there. Uh, I have a lot of questions in my head, but the most difficult is when to use have in a sentence. And I included this one because we use have often when you're talking, when you're talking about perfect tenses, the present perfect and the past perfect. We also, we did lessons on this before, and I will link those again. We have a lesson on the present perfect. We have a lesson on the past perfect. If you have not seen those, please check those out because we give a lot more detailed information as well as some examples. But just simply put, we use the present perfect. We're, it's, it's talking about something in the past, but it's kind of linking the present with the past because you're having that conversation now. And I'd say, yeah, I have, I have traveled to Thailand. I'm having a conversation with you guys and I'm talking like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've traveled to Thailand, I've been there. Now this is an unspecified time. And we do use present perfect when talking about unspecified time. Now, if I gave a specific time, for example, I said last year, then that time indicator, that would tell me to use the past tense. And I'd say, oh, I traveled to Thailand last year. But when we're talking about unspecified time, just as an example, we would use the present perfect. Um, past perfect, okay, for this one, you are talking again about in the past, but you're talking about two events, all right? And you're linking those events. You're linking one event in the past with another event in the past. So look at my example sentence right here. Again, this is a complex sentence. We have a dependent clause with an independent clause. So by the time they arrived, by the time they arrived, that's my dependent clause. In this case, in that dependent clause, you are just using the past simple. Like I said, the independent clause, that is really going to be your, your time uh, indicator right there. That's where you're going to use the past perfect. This is another example where students might, they want to use the past perfect in the dependent clause. And no, it is just the simple past. But we use the, the past perfect in the independent clause, we had already eaten. So by the time they arrived in the past, all right, they arrived in the past, we had already eaten, also in the past, all right? It happened before they arrived. So we're talking about these two events and one happened before the other. We, we had already eaten, it happened before. We, we ate before they arrived. That's basically the meaning of this sentence. So that's a quick little overview about the present tense, the, the perfect tenses, again, Please, please, please check out those lessons uh, that we already did to find more examples and to get a lot more information. So, excellent. All right, moving right along. Let's look. Um, 
kind of trying to check out the comments, seeing what's going on. Um, this was another one from Khan. He said, sir, please teach us uh, about uh, used to and causative verbs. Actually, used to, I want to do another lesson on used to, just about used to, so I'm saving that one. But causative verbs, the reason I this caught my attention is because somebody asked us about this not too long ago, and maybe we'll make another video just dedicated to causative verbs. But if you don't know what causative verbs are, it is a verb used to indicate that some person or thing makes something happen. So there is a common list of causative verbs, make, cause, allow, help, let, have, keep, require. And when we use these causative verbs, you're basically, this, this is not how it is for all of them, but this is kind of a general format, a general structure when we're making these sentences. You'd have a causative verb, you say the person or the thing, and then you're just using that base verb, okay? So for example, made, make, let's start with that one. And my, my sentence right here, my boss made me work late, all right? Made is a causative verb. You see that for you. My boss, that's the subject. Made, a causative verb. Me would be the person. Work is just the base verb. Work late. So it's kind of, it's a simple sentence, all right? I think it's easy to understand, um, but now you know that, yes, make would be the causative verb. The next sentence, Wes helped Ioana cook dinner. Uh, it's something, usually, I, usually I'm on dish duty, but I... I want to cook more. That's one of my resolutions. I want to be able to cook more this year. So West helped you want to cook dinner, all right? Helped is my causative verb. Uh, the followed by the person you want to cook is the base verb, all right? So let's look at the next one. We had another question from Olivia. She asked, all right, hi, I have a grammar question about direct object and indirect object. It's really confusing. There are a lot of rules. Wants a simple explanation. Again, this is a great topic. Maybe we'll do more of a deep dive in another lesson, but just real quickly, if, if you're looking to know the difference between direct and indirect objects, okay, uh, here's a sentence right here. Wes gives Ioana a present, all right? And this is something I'm going to do tomorrow, in case you didn't know, is Yuana's birthday. So you guys give a, give a shout out in the comments tomorrow uh, to Yuana or on Facebook, if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, uh, a birthday shout out. So Wes gives Yuana a present. You know, this is our sentence. Now the direct object, all right, we, we use direct objects and indirect objects when we're talking about transitive verbs. So transitive verbs are those verbs that will take on a direct object, or, uh, and, and if we have a direct object, then you may have an indirect object. So give, to give, that is a transitive verb. So Wes gives you wanna a present. The direct object is going to answer who or whom or what, all right? So the easiest way to do it and what I always tell students is to make a question. Take your subject, take your verb, in this case, Wes is the subject, give is the verb, and make a question, all right? What does Wes give? And the answer to that question is the direct object. So we have Wes gives. What does Wes give? A present. So that is our direct object. Present is the direct object. Now, the indirect object is going to answer the question of, to whom, for whom, or for what. So then we can take our, <laughs> we can take this and ask another question, all right, using the direct object. So we've asked the first question, uh, what does Wes give? The answer is a present. Now we want to know to whom does Wes give a present? All right, now we're making a question using the subject, the verb, and the direct object. To whom does Wes give a present? Well, to you wanna. She is the indirect object. So in this, in this sentence right here, we have subject is Wes, gives is our main verb, Ioana is the indirect object, and a present is the direct object, okay? So I hope this is a very simple and easy way to follow. Again, there are more complex grammar sentences with direct and indirect objects, but that we'll, we'll save that for a longer lesson. So. Again, just want to give a shout out. What's up if you guys are joining us? 
just going through and answering some grammar questions um, that you guys asked a few days ago. And I'm taking those questions and, and kind of just going through them. So let's look at this next one. So the next question is, um, hello, I'm a pre-intermediate level uh, native Russian speaker. Have some problems with that, okay? For example, I want you to be happier. Want to use that in the sentence. It's confusing, yes, all right? When and where to use that? Again, this is, it's not a, a very simple answer. It could be long detailed, but I wanted to quickly talk to you about the that clause, okay? So, Oftentimes, that is probably one of the most overused words in English when speaking and even when writing. I, I once had a writing instructor in university told me, he said, when you're done with your writing, go through your paper and just eliminate all, like most of the time where you write that, just get rid of it, all right? It's, it's unnecessary, we overuse it. So when we're talking about the that clause, it's a dependent clause that begins with the ver word that, all right? Now, this may follow verbs, adjectives, or nouns. And this is where, like my writing teacher has said, look, clauses, they can be used without the word that. We can just take it out, and it's not going to change the meaning. So it, it's a word, often it's like a filler word that people tend to throw in there. Um, for example, all right? He knows that the match is over, all right? We often follow that, the, that clause often follows the verb know, all right? I know that something, all right? He knows that, they know that. It's very common that a that clause will follow the verb know. So he knows that the match is over. We can just as easily take that out of there and just say, he knows the match is over. We, we don't need to say it, but sometimes we just want to say it. The second sentence, also, I'm glad that you joined me for today's lesson. It's very true. I'm glad that you joined me. But in this case, again, we can take that out if we want. I'm glad you joined me for today's lesson. But there's often a list of like just verbs, adjectives, and nouns that are, are often followed by a that clause. And, and that is the reason we see this word so much and it comes up. So this is just a quick, a little quick dive into the that clause, but also <clears throat> great idea for a future lesson to really go in there, all right? So let's look um, at that, all right. So again, this is something we just wanted to try out and, and see that, you know, how you guys uh, enjoyed this and, and for me to be able to get some questions from you because in the future, I wanna be able to put something up on our community page and say, hey, tell me your pronunciation questions or tell me what words are difficult to pronounce or tell me uh, you know, a vocabulary word you wanna learn. And then I can put use that, uh, use your question, put together a lesson the same way we did with this grammar. So again, Hope you guys uh, found this a little useful, even though we went through this very quickly. Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking us questions. And again, please check out some of our other lessons, especially grammar. We have a ton of grammar lessons up there. Again, I will leave a link to a playlist of many of our grammar lessons. So. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Please, if you enjoy what we do, hit that like button, share the lesson. Also, there is a link to the secret fluency lesson in the description. Click on that if you want to subscribe, stay up to date, get emails about what we're doing and, and new developments because we have a lot planned for this year, a lot of new stuff going on. Write questions in the comments once the, vid once the video is posted. We love hearing from you guys and join us on social media right up here. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, right here on YouTube. So. Thank you, uh, Olivia. Thank you, Shara. All right, you guys are here. Awesome. Uh, Tripti, Ronaldo, Molly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, awesome. Glad you guys will join us today. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And again, please write to us. Write to us in the comments. We love hearing from you guys. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you very soon. So long.